power. Let's talk about the future. Power! It's what we all want. It's what we all need. But not the ultimate power kind. I'm talking about portable power for our devices like phones or cars or any of our other gadgets. See, when we're on the go, we can't always plug into a wall outlet to get our power. I'm Granny Mahara, and I'm here at UCLA to talk to Dr. Rick Kaner, who's made a breakthrough in portable power. Hi, Dr. Kaner, I'm Grant. Good to Hi. meet you. Good to meet you. So, I've heard that you've made a breakthrough in portable power. What's the nature of this breakthrough? Well, we began working on graphene, which is a single layer of carbon, and it turns out it can store a tremendous amount of energy. Oh, like a battery. Like a battery, but not quite. We're working on something called supercapacitors. So all the charge is stored on the surface. And if you have an enormous surface, you can store a lot of charge very quickly. Currently, carbon-based supercapacitors are used for electric buses in China. And the idea is you just make a charging station, the bus stop, every five or ten miles. And as people get on and off the bus, the bus gets charged. So you can do that within a minute to two minutes. You could stick them into your cell phone and charge your cell phone in 30 seconds or less. Graphene is a single layer of carbon. So if you look at this, this is, this is graphite. So okay. graphene's the, the top layer. You can look at the natural mineral graphite. This is how graphite comes out of the ground. It's actually really light. It's, it's, it's much lighter than it looks. It's not that dense. Yeah. Graphene, a single layer, was discovered by Novoselov and Geim in 2004. But I actually started on graphene much earlier than that. In 2002, we took out a patent, we believe the world's earliest patent, on how to make graphene. Yeah. And so we developed a method where we take graphite, we oxidize it, turn it into graphite oxide, and we're going to show you how we can use a laser and deoxygenates, it turns it into graphene. So that's why you have all of these CDs around the lab, it's not that you listen to a lot of music. No. This is what you're using to make the That's graphene. That's what we use to make the graphene. Okay. Now, let me introduce you to my student, Dr. Meher el Kadi, who's developed this process. All right. Okay, so you're gonna do a demo here of yeah. how you make graphene. Yep. Uh, you will have to just get the GO layer on the CD. To do that, I have to do this on a piece of plastic and... <laughs> this is like a science cooking show. And then the next step will just to dry this up. We can just put it in an oven. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Now I need to put it on a CD here. Okay, looking good. All I'm going to do is convert the GO here to graphene. And to do that, I'm just using a symbol, a label maker. So, you use a label maker yeah, to, to make the future? Yeah. Because you use whatever tools are at your disposal. Yep. So what we're doing is coating this material on, on T-shirts and then making them into graphene surface capacitors for wearable electronics. Really? So it can light up. It can store power for my phone. Yes. Well, that's awesome, Meher. Thank you very much. Yeah, anytime. All right. And now we have John Nelson, president of TDK Americas, to give us another perspective on power conversion from one of our supplier partners. Hey, John. So I imagine you must meet a lot of engineers on a daily basis. What are some of their concerns relating to power and power management? The main concerns we hear from engineers are basically converting more and more power into smaller packages or smaller footprints. Yeah. What trends do you see happening in power management and conversion? The trend is to push switching frequencies to higher and higher levels. This opens the door to lower capacitance and inductance. Awesome. Reduces size and power loss while increasing overall performance. Cool. So when do you think new materials such as gallium nitride are going to become part of mainstream power conversion? And What's been the delay so far? Well, gallium nitride is on the way. The advantage of gallium nitride is that it can switch about a thousand times faster than standard silica. Uh, so once the cost comes down and the reliability is established, uh, we're going to see more of it. All right. Thanks for your time. Hey, everybody. I'm talking to Infineon, one of Mauser's supplier partners. Hey, Adam. 
What are the future materials for the power of tomorrow? We are incredibly confident that gallium nitride will unlock the next level system efficiencies, energy savings, power density, as well as overall system cost. Wow. Now what trends do you see and how is Infineon working towards them? There are two underlying trends. First of all, the higher efficiency and second of all, to support the density requirements. Let's take the density requirements. It's fascinating to watch, but in the switch mode power supply for servers, their requirements is to achieve more output power for the same size. Now let's look at the other extreme for flat panel displays. They are requiring the same output power, but for smaller size. Cool, that's a man who knows the future. What makes the graphene ideal as a supercapacitor? The real exciting discovery came when Maher dragged me into the lab and he said, take a look at this. And he just took a light bulb and he just turned it on with this little piece of graphene. But the amazing thing is it doesn't stop working. After charging for two or three seconds, he ran this light for over five minutes. I thought we have something very important. I, I thought the world changed at that point. It's truly amazing to be able to take a peek into the future and see how all these advancements in energy storage and power management are going to be keeping us connected, going to be keeping our devices powered, our cars, and even our homes. So special thanks to Rick and Maher and all the people working with their discoveries. I'll see you next time.